consider linting experience and tackling specific code issues. Here's how to get started. 1. Installing the plugin. Use npm install or yarn add to install the desired plugin. 2. Configuring the plugin. Add the plugin name to your slintros file within the plugins array. Most plugins offer specific configuration options. Refer to the plugin's documentation for details and customize rules as needed. 3. Using the plugin's rules. In your code, utilize the rule names as defined by the plugin, often prefixed with the plugin name, to leverage its functionalities. 4. Sharing plugin configurations. If you're working on a team project, consider using shared configuration files, e.g., to ensure consistency and simplify maintenance. 5. Extending plugins. Some plugins allow creating custom rules based on their framework. Refer to the plugin's documentation for details and advanced customization options. Tips for choosing and using ESLint plugins. Focus on your needs. Choose plugins that address specific linting areas relevant to your code base or coding style. Read the documentation. Thoroughly understand the plugin's capabilities, configuration options, and compatibility before integrating it. Start small. Introduce plugins gradually and avoid overloading your configuration at once. Consider community feedback. Research the plugin's popularity, user reviews, and community support for confidence in its usage. By leveraging ESLint plugins effectively, you can tailor your linting experience, catch specific code issues, and maintain a code base that adheres to your desired standards and best practices. Feel free to ask if you have any specific questions about choosing, configuring, or using ESLint plugins in your projects. I'm here to help you unlock their full potential.